Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You want the best, you've got a Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back relax and enjoy because ladies and gentlemen it's showtime set to do battle for 30 laps the green flag is waving hello again it's wing nation presented by sage fruit talking sprint car racing our favorite time of the week and we are so glad that you have joined us steve post and aaron evernham here in the studios hello how are you i'm doing well how are you i am fantastic fantastic we've got a really cool show and we'll get into that a little bit, but uh, let's get through our hot topics and then okay. we'll, uh, what's going on in the sprint car world, and then we'll get into our really, really cool show. All right. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Racing weekend. Um, we're getting down there. Yeah, not much. World of Outlaw and NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, just one night, Aaron. And uh, the, the gravel Macedo battle played out again, and um, this time it was Macedo getting the upper hand. He's still on fire. Yeah, he's still on fire, but uh, from a playoff or from point standpoint, um, he's got a lot of work to do and just the world yeah. finals to do it. So, yeah, but Carson really rolling. That's for he sure. He sure is. And I want to give a quick shout out to big Dave gravel. I don't know if you saw, yeah, but he totally suffered a, suffered a heart attack and apparently he's doing well and recovering well, but I just wanted to give him a shout out from wing nation. Boy, they're cool people. Aren't they, they are the whole family. And Maureen and the entire gang. They're just, just yeah. wonderful folks. So yeah, good, big shout out to big Dave. Uh, keep, keep paying attention to doctors, listen to Maureen. That's something probably new. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 do what you're supposed to do. We need you back yes. at the racetrack. Uh, King of the West, uh, they had a pair of races. Mm -hmm. um, Kern County, uh, TK picked up the win in that Team Zero car. Get I know some donuts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. TK, TK, you, you, never have to, you never have to worry about the emotion when it's over. He <laughs> gives you a show. Uh, Hanford on Saturday night, Cole Macedo, he rebounded from a crash on Friday night. And uh, was able to climb back into the point battle. And uh, so um, he won. And then Baps Motor Speedway, Danny Dietrich. This was a wild one. I guess they bounced off each other a time or two. Oh, yeah. Shocker. Yeah, exactly. So Danny <laughs> Dietrich picked up the win. Um, that's a hot topic number one. Hot topic number two, silly season. And there's more unknown than known. Mm -hmm. Well, there's probably more known. You know, Brad's probably in the 49. <laughs> Donnie's probably in the 15, you Good know, chance, yeah. there's, there's a lot. Danny Smith's going to have the new paint scheme. Danny Smith's got a brand new yeah. paint scheme. Uh, we're, we've reached out to him. Our people are working with his people so that we know the day that we'll he unveils the, the paint one. scheme. Yeah. We'll be the first to know when he unveils that new paint scheme. He'll be in the, I think he's going to run the four car. This... Thinking maybe they'll go with white paint scheme. Oh, oh, boy, you're going out on the limb there. You're going out on the limb there. Uh, we did learn last week that the Rudine 26, Zeb Wise was out and Justin Peck is in. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, we had Dason Persley here who's taking Justin's ride. Yep. So we know where Justin is going. Um, when Yes, exactly. Um, question marks as far as nationally touring teams, CJB, what they're going to do because Spencer Baston has gone yep. to the 14 car. Um, and Lord knows what's going on with Roth with yeah. their two cars, whether it's two cars, whether it's one car, whether it's a regional car, whether it's two national cars, Never know. I think everything is on the table with Roth. I'm assuming Buddy Kofoid is set. We haven't heard anything about that. So assuming Buddy Kofoid yeah, is good. Pretty solid. Season. Uh, sounded, you know, that's probably good. Chase Randall, Zeb Wise, Corey Elias, and some of the drivers, and then really enter your name here. There's a lot of other drivers that would like the chance to go world of outlaw or high limit racing. So stay tuned. It's going to be, a, and then we get into the who's racing where part of silly season as well. Aaron, this one here, and I caught a little wind of this out at Tulare last week. I, I didn't see this, but I'm very happy to see it. Calistoga returning. Of course, Calistoga, you've raced yep. there and you've been there. This is a, uh, I, I guess people say this is the most picturesque race. Oh, it's on the beautiful. Planet. And it's, I mean, it's in the heart of wine country. How could it? not be beautiful yeah no it's a great facility i mean it's sad that it's been idle for a bit yeah so it's the napa county fairgrounds and in the spring of this year the city of calistoga made a bid or a process or whatever they needed to do and they have acquired ownership of it mm. okay so city buys a racetrack usually that's not a good sign in calistoga california that's a great sign 
Scott Atkinson is the new fairground manager there, and his goal is to return racing to the fairgrounds at Calistoga. Isn't that cool? That's, that's awesome. Um, on Sunday, October 19th, they had a cleanup day, and where I caught wind of this was at Tulare because everyone's like, they planned a cleanup day the day after the Trophy Cup, you know, and that's a ways yeah. away. You're not going to go from Trophy Cup to Tulare uh, or from uh, Tulare to Calistoga for a, for a cleanup day. Um, while the group at Trophy Cup wished they could have been a cleanup day, nearly 200 people showed up at cleanup day. That's awesome. And there's some great pictures. The Louis Vermeil uh, mm-hmm. Facebook page really had some great pictures. You see, you just see people out there with just trimmers yeah. cleaning off. You know, walls and and weeds and everything. Um, Boy, fingers crossed. That's neat. I am a huge uh, advocate. I have that side project I've talked about, a Postman 68. And one of the elements of it is racetrack revival. Uh, The late model world scored a big one this past weekend with Pensboro returning. Mm -hmm. Um, And man, the pictures from there and the the work that Barry Braun and his crew put into it. Uh, The asphalt world gets one this week, uh, Newport Speedway in Tennessee has sat idle since 2017 and that's going to roar back into life this weekend um i love this with calistoga i just uh, look forward to it and so really really good news so fun stuff all right today's show aaron what were you doing 20 years ago (laughs) i was uh well it's california time so i was probably still sleeping yeah you would have still been sleeping (laughs) in a uh, hotel up in the lounge of the hauler who knows but yeah probably still sleeping Yes, uh, but you were preparing for a night of racing yeah. at the Thunder Bowl Raceway in Tulare. Yeah, that was going to change my life, really. Really, it yeah. really truly did. Uh, it's 20 years ago, Aaron's World of Outlaw win. So what were you, I could not believe you're eight uh, years yeah, old I was when eight, you were driving I, I was. a World of Outlaw sprint car. We talk about the kids. No, I kind of set the, the standard of being a I kid. I guess you did. No, it's funny. I put that on Facebook today because I was like, 20 years. Oof. You know, it's, it's, I'm celebrating it, but man, that makes me feel really old. So I wrote, oh, man, I can't believe I was eight years old. And uh, John Bickford, Bickford sure. Jeff Gordon, stepped out yeah. was the first person to write back. And he was like, man, I thought we started Jeff Young. But yeah. no, I I, um, I was 23 years old. So, uh, yeah. Nice. Um, change your life. Yeah, really. I mean, things were kind of starting to fall into place as far as I had um, done this program with Ford and I had started to talk to people about, I really wanted to go IndyCar racing. That had been my goal. Um, So things were starting to roll, but I feel like that certainly validated and and set the ball rolling for, you know, obviously you come with some credentials if you win a world of outlaw race. Sure. The irony to me is we're celebrating 20 years and you're still the only woman to win a world of all our race. Yeah. It's pretty wild to me. I remember like uh, the 10th anniversary thinking, wow, it's been 10 years and not another woman has done it. And there have been some that have been successful. I know Becca Anderson, I think she had a second yep. place finish somewhere. Um, but it is, you know, as far as you want to see women doing better and bigger things in motorsports, it's a little bit, in a way, it's a little bit sad that it's been 20 years and there hasn't been another uh, woman to do it. But, I mean, obviously, selfishly, it's kind of nice to yeah. still have the record. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, 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 um, uh, I always get it, get a charge out of every year in football when someone goes undefeated for a while. The only team to go undefeated, everything was the Miami Dolphins. And, uh, yeah, they have a gathering, like, and when the last team loses a game, they have a gathering or get to yeah. the remaining They're members. Kind of so you still yeah. have that going for you. Uh, yeah. What we're going to do on today's show, um, the driver who finished second to you is Paul McMahon. So we're going to talk to Paul. We're going to dial up Paul. And then we're going to get a little historical perspective and who better than Dave Argebright yes. to talk a little bit about the history and what it was like in 2004, that sort of thing. So we are celebrating 20 years to the day of young Aaron Crocker at the time <laughs> scoring that first world of outlaw win and we'll do that we'll talk to paul mcmahon when we return tony do you even remember how to drive one of these it's not something you forget you should know that the drive to succeed the need to win the desire to be a champion and we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same like tony stewart racing sage fruit strives to be the best in all they do they work hard on the farm in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a sage fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. 
yeah, just want to say congratulations to Erin on the 20 year anniversary of her first one here at Solari. I remember that night. It was an exciting night. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, especially outlaws, come to Solari and don't like the track. It's just aggressive and, and difficult. And you stepped right up and made it happen. So that was uh, that was an exciting night. I think really, really something new, something to be proud of. And it's pretty cool that it's been 20 years. It doesn't seem like that long ago. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. That was Jason Myers. He finished 13th that night. Okay, so let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us, another racer who was in the field that night. Had a runner-up finish on that night. Paul McMahon joins us. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm good, guys. How are you guys doing? We are well. Paul, you are our go-to guy with everything <laughs> that goes on. I remember we when when we, um, unfortunately, we'd have drivers that we we lost. We would always call you and because you could give us perspective on it. And here we are. We're calling you for a second-place finish, for God's sake. But uh, I, I know you can offer perspective on this. And, and Paul, just... Uh, 20 years, when 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 Craig reached out to you, you realized it was 20 years ago. What's your thoughts? What's your memories? Just what what was your takeaway from from all of that? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, if it was you know 20 years ago, it just unfathoms it's unfathomable that it's been that long, um, and and how much I've forgotten that 20 years. And um, but I, I I do remember the night very well. And um, man, a lot of things have have gone by since then, but. Uh, so it was a it was a m memorable night for for Aaron for sure, and um, you know it was it was a great night for all the sprint cars. Well, and I think back to that night, you know, it, it was obviously the biggest moment in my racing career. But I think over time doing this show, stay, staying around sprint car racing, you always talk about the competition level and how it's you know it's never been greater. The competitive competition level is crazy. And then I was looking at who was in the field that night, and I'm like, wait a second. I mean, that was legit. You had you know, Kinzer and Sammy, Lasowski, you, Jack, Hoddenshield, uh, Schatz. It was like, all right. You know, when we talk about sprint cars and competition level, I, yes, of course, right now the, the cars are probably more even than they've ever been. But running against those guys night in and night out like you did for a very long time was, uh, was no easy task. No, definitely not. I mean, that was the heyday back then. I mean, there were so many great race car drivers, so many Hall of Fame race car drivers that were in the field. And – you know, the world of outlaws 20 years ago was, was super, super tough. I mean, it, it's tough now, but I don't, I think it was more tough to win back then than it is now. Um, just because of the caliber of cars, owners and drivers we had back then. Um, uh, I, I, and, and Tulare is not an easy place to race at. I mean, you know, Tulare swallows up a lot of race cars. So, um, you know, it's, it was just, um, the caliber, like we said, the caliber of cars, what you accomplished that night. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember everything about it. I know I was driving the Selma Shell car, and uh, I believe, I believe, it, did it lay rubber that night? No, that was the next night. The next night it laid rubber, and we about all popped tires. But this yeah. was the, you were battling with Jack for the lead, and uh, with some lap cars when I got by you guys. Oh, okay, yep, yep. And we were, yes, I remember now. Yeah, like, yeah. It was, uh, you know, it was a great race. That was, that was my best, you know. That was my best run at Tulare, and you beat me really past <laughs> my my butt right now. That I didn't never because I never won at Tulare. So, that thanks for the bringing back that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Whoops, never mind. <laughs> there we go. Another one with Paul. Here we go. Yeah, um, absolutely amazing. Paul, d d describe a little bit. Just describe a little more about the challenges of Tulare. Well, Tulare is just one of them places that you got to, it, it's cowboy up. It's, you got to wrap your elbows up. It's usually built a cushion right against the fence. It's got this, um, I don't know if there's an underground sinkhole there, but there's always yeah. a hump getting into turns, turns one and two or entering one right at the crossover where everybody drives out. And it's very tricky to be on the cushion and get through that hump at the same time. But if you also want to run the bottom, you still got to drive through the hump again. So it's all about, where you set the car and and where you where that hump is where you you know you try to drive over top of it and then turn um but the it's probably it is the coolest racetrack in california i mean it um they pound the fence like no other i remember finally i think they just, they just put boilerplate i believe on the walls now because they i think they took out I think they've cut every tree down in California, supplying the plywood to put back on the fence every time some they'd have a race there. So, uh, very challenging racetrack. Um, very cool place to race at. 
Well, it's, it's funny, Paul, like as I, when I was racing, you know, I always wanted to just be considered another racer out there. I just wanted to earn all of your respect and to, to show what I could possibly do. But as I've gotten older and as time has obviously gone by in these 20 years and now I have a daughter, I do want to celebrate the significance of being a woman and being the only woman to ever do it. And I know you have a daughter and um, now a daughter-in-law as well. It's interesting to see perspective change. Like I think of even people like Kyle Busch, who I got to race with in the truck series, who I don't really think was big, very fond of me, but now he has a daughter that's showing interest in racing. It's, <laughs> it's interesting to me that fathers of daughters um, seem to have a little extra appreciation for significant moments like that. Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, you, you always, you know, I always just tell my daughter she can be whatever she, she wants to be. And, and, you obviously wanted to be a race car and race car driver, and you accomplished that. You went out and won against the best in the in the in the world in sprint cars. You went on to run NASCAR. Um, you know, I never looked at you as a girl racer. You were a competitor of ours. I had the utmost respect for you while we were out on the racetrack and off the racetrack. Um, you know, never I never thought about you know because I raced with Shauna Wilski when I raced out in California, and she won a, a, a race out there, a NARC race. You know, and I, and I ran second. And so I never really looked at you any different, you know, I mean, yeah, you're female, but once we put our helmets on, you know, I'm five foot six. Once I put my helmet on, I'm six foot two inside the race car. So, <laughs> um, never really looked at you any different because you had a dream and you accomplished your dream and, and your goals and, and went out and did what you had to do. You, you didn't do it because, I mean, you didn't get no, no, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. No. No, just because you're a woman, you didn't get any, any special treatment. Yeah. Everybody raced you the same way they raced everybody else. And you went out and kicked everybody's butt on, on that night. And, and that's some uh, accomplishment you got to be very, very proud of. Yeah, it really truly is. It's it's fascinating to me. And it's it's fascinating where Aaron and I talked a little bit before the break that it's been 20 years and nobody has been able to do it then as far as it goes. Paul, is there anything else like that 2020, uh, 2004 season? I think Steve Kinzer was champion. You ran the full year. Aaron was running the full year. Is there anything about that season else that kind of stands out to you? I mean, I and and I, believe me, I asked everybody. I was in Tulare two weeks ago and I asked everybody about that. And like, I don't remember anything. I don't remember what I did yesterday. I don't remember anything about it. Is there anything driving that Selma shell car or anything that just kind of stands out about that, that era of time? Well, I mean, you know, unfortunately I've lost some of my memories of yep. the past with, with my, with my concussions I've had over the years and the last one I ended up with. But um, I just remember that era. I mean, you know, Lasowski, I mean, just the drivers we had was phenomenal. I mean, racing was in probably the greatest space at that time it was uh it was right before the split when everything kind of went to heck but it was racing was at its pinnacle i think at that point we were you know we weren't racing for as much money as we are now but we we were racing against we were running 100 times a year you know we weren't you know we weren't soft and needed 60 races a year we raced 100 times and i just you know i remember you know i i just remember the times God, to be honest, I don't remember a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's understandable. <laughs> Well, when you think back to that that time, I mean, I, I geez, I feel like I sound like that person who's talking about had to walk to school uphill both ways, and we had it so tough back in the day. But when you think about the teams now, there's so many resources, and they have so much uh, money behind them that the drivers are getting to fly in and out and get to go home and spend time like that. In that era, yeah, we weren't living in, in out of our cars or whatever, but you were still pretty much living on the road with your team up and down the road. It wasn't as, not that sprint car racing is glamorous now, but it was even less glamorous then, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we raced four or five nights a week, so to get home was not an an option. We 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 didn't have that option unless you lived in Indiana and you're you're in Massachusetts and I was from California. There was no getting home. Yeah. Um. So, um, it's just a different time. It was, you know, it was, I I think it was the best time because I got to do it when we when we cut the racing back, and it, you know, I I enjoyed going home, but it just wasn't the same. I mean, like we used to all get together we used to all do things together you know with the you know if we had our motorhomes we'd park in the same spots we'd all do something we all had kids the same age and um you know i, I go to the races now and you just don't see that and i mean it's it's more of a business now mm -hmm. a business now than it was then i mean it was still business business back then but it just was more 
I don't know. It was we were tough on the racetrack, but after the racetrack, it was it was done and over with, and we all had a good time together. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. I've I've heard that a lot from a lot of the veteran drivers, and and even remember back in the modified days and everything where I come from. Paul, before we cut you loose here, uh, this chapter, this phase of your life with Quick Car and everything, how's things going? You, uh, I know you went to a big dirt late model race up at Eldora. Uh, everything good in the McMahon household, and everything good with you in your racing world. Yeah, everything's going great. I uh, just had a new grandson yeah. born um, a little over a month ago. And, um, you know, my family's doing great. I'm taking in all the, the time with my grandson as I can. And, and, and my other two grandsons that, that play football and soccer. So I'm enjoying that on the weekend, do a lot of fishing now. Um, but really enjoy going to the races and just being a fan now. Um, you know, the, the late models and the uh, we did see late models modified, all sorts of different types of racing that I never really got to pay attention to when I was racing. Um, and to go there and, and, and go to the, I've been to the World 100 now, and I went to the was a World Championship or whatever that was for late models at the Lucas Oil late models at, at Eldora. And to watch them um, guys run the fence like they do, you know, you, you kind of, the way I put it, like the first time I went, you had um, Hudson O'Neill pounding the fence like Hod. Yeah. And you had Davenport driving through the middle like shots. And I mean, it was just, yeah. it was cool to watch, you know, and, and, and it became a big fan of it and got to see it again. The last time I was there was McCready pounding the boards and, and uh, Bobby Pierce running the middle like shots. So yeah. um, just enjoying life, enjoying retirement. And, you know, like I said, I, I miss, I miss going to the races, but I still get to go enough to, to get my fix. It is cool. Yes. It really, truly is. Paul, we are so grateful for your friendship to, to us here at Wing Nation and uh, to, to to even accept a call on a second-place finish. <laughs> and, uh, and and unfortunately, we found out that it's a track you always wanted to win at, so Aaron broke your heart with that. But we yeah. always appreciate your perspective on it, and uh, we wish you well. And uh, uh, probably at this stage, I'll probably catch up with you at PRI again. But uh, thanks for joining us here on uh, Wing Nation. Yep, thanks for having me, guys. And congratulations, Aaron, again on – the, the accomplishment you had 20 years ago and i look forward to seeing you all sometime at the racetrack thank you very much hall of famer paul mcmahon class of 2024 we need to step away we're going to go a little different on the history dave argerbright joins us next tony do you even remember how to drive one of these it's not something you forget you should know that the drive to succeed the need to win the desire to be a champion and we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Hey Aaron, just want to say congratulations. Uh, 20 years goes by fast. Uh, the gray hairs have all caught up to us and you know, it's still an awesome night watching you win that race. You know, it's uh, hard to say you can win an outlaw race, especially here at Tulare. So congrats. Wish you the best. Hope all is well. That is the one and only TK. <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. what, and that boy ain't changed much at all. No, he hasn't. He, I mean, he mentioned a few gray hairs, but we certainly had a lot of fun back racing together. Yep, and TK, he finished uh, eighth that night at uh, Tulare. Yeah. So we're grateful that Paul McMahon joined us to give us perspective of the driver who finished second in that race. We want to go a little broader perspective, though, and who better to do that than 2014 class of the Sprint Car Hall of Famer, columnist, reporter, historian, all-around good guy, Dave Argerbright joins us. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hey, Steve. Good to be here. Thank you. Appreciate the invite. Well, Congrats, Aaron. 20 yeah. years. Thank wow. <laughs> when, Makes me feel old, but thank you. Yeah. When Craig Moore reached out to you and said it's been 20 years yeah. since Aaron's World of Outlaw win, what went through your mind, Dave? Um, you know, first was amazement. 20 years? Seriously? But then it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. 2004. That's right. 20 yeah. years. I always think back, Dave, to one of the first times I met you when I made the Nationals in 2003 at Knoxville and you interviewed me. And I, I'm not sure I had ever done a live. I know I hadn't done a live TV interview. And man, I was like so nervous. And afterwards, you told me I look like a, a deer in the headlights. And I never <laughs> forgot that. Oh. Uh, you know what? It's funny, Aaron. You say that uh, the other day I found a picture of that, of uh, the, our interview there. Yeah. I should, I'll find that and share it with you. 
Oh, that's it's awesome. Really, really cool. Dave, um, we, we talked to Paul a fair amount about the 2004 season and how tough sprint car racing is. Just what, what's your, what's your take? What's, uh, you know, I, I thought we, we live in this world. Aaron, Aaron framed this really, really good. We live in this world where we talk about sprint car racing has never been better than it is here in 2024. And then you look at the field of drivers that Aaron bested that night. Sprint car racing in 2004 was pretty solid with the world of outlaws. Oh, very much. You know, I think we all get caught up in uh, thinking that two things. We think our current reality is is the way it's always been, and that's not true. You know, it's ever changing, but it's also true. You know, it's really good right now, and it was really good back then. It's uh, never been easy to to win a World of Outlaws race. You know, I'm currently working on a book with Steve Kinzer on his life, his autobiography, and he points that out often. You know, that when you go race with the Outlaws everybody is bringing their very, very best, you know, and it's just very hard to win. Yeah, you know, I, I said the exact same thing when we had Paul on. You know, I look at sprint car racing now and you talk to anyone like Kyle Larson, anyone talk about the level of intensity. And I think, well, man, I had a race against Steve, Mo Steve Kinzer, Terry McCarl, Sammy Swindell, Daniel Lasoski, Darren Pittman, Saldana, all those guys were rough and tough and it seemed, um, I don't know if uh, grittier is the right word, but a little bit more, I don't know. It's, it's, sprint car racing has become more polished as there's been more sponsorship and more corporate involvement. But back in that day, there wasn't much polished about sprint car, about World of Outlaw racing. It was pretty tough as nails. Yeah, it really was, Aaron. And, and it's hard to know really what travel is for guys today. You know, you have to think it's a little bit smoother. The trucks are a little bigger, and, but it's still probably not easy. You're away from your family for a long time and a lot of restaurant food that you get sick of and <laughs> never enough sleep, that kind of stuff. And But you're right, you know, doing it out of a pickup truck and things like that, it was tough. No doubt about it. Dave, uh, Aaron referenced a 2003 interview that you did with her when she qualified for the Nationals. 2004, she outran the uh, ran the full season at a couple of top fives, eight top tens over the course of the time. What was what was your take on this uh, this young girl from the sprint car hotbed of Massachusetts rolling in? What do, do, you, do you have any recollection or anything, or just your thought, or your perceptive or perception from that point? Well, uh, to be honest with you, Steve, I, I always felt like this was a kid that kind of had her head on right. You know, you you had the right ideas and, and you were willing to work for it. You know, you you wanted to win. You know, you weren't just out there. You you could talk about, you know, what you were trying to do to get better because ultimately you wanted to win a race, you know, win every race that you could. And uh, that's the key. You know, I don't care how young or old somebody is. You know, I, I've always said the stopwatch is blind. It doesn't know if you're young or old or male or female or any of that. You're just running against the clock and each other, and it doesn't matter. And if you've got the desire to win and the willingness to work hard, you can do it. And I think Erin really proved that, and she kind of embodied those things when she raced. Well, thank you very much. You know, I, I feel like that. And I said that when we had Paul on as well, that one thing that when I was racing, I didn't really want to be the the female racer. I just wanted to be a racer and I wanted to win. I wanted to prove to those guys that I belong there and earn the respect. But as I've gotten older and as uh, 20 years have gone by, you know, I do, I am grateful that I was the first woman to do it. And I'm still the only woman that's ever done it. But I wonder if you have, do you have any thoughts as to, to why there aren't more women successful? I mean, I, I know it's a question across motorsports, but you see more and more women in ARCA. You see more and more women trying to climb the ladder, but sprint cars, uh, not so much. There's some, but there's not many. Certainly not, there's none on the, the national touring series right now. Well, I think, you know, there's probably a lot of different reasons for it, Aaron. Mm -hmm. You touch on a, a key issue there. Uh, there's money issues. There's a lot of things. And, and I do think that for male or female, whatever, this is a tough gig. Uh, running sprint cars <laughs> and trying to to be successful, trying to make it at the professional level is extremely difficult. And um, I'm encouraged, you know, I think everybody should have an opportunity. I've always felt that, you know, if you're a young woman and you wanna be a professional race driver, absolutely, there should be, every door should be open just like it is for anybody else. And um, we'll still see it. You know, there's still going to be there's going to be someday a woman who's a champion at a professional high level national sprint car series. It's a, it's got to happen eventually. I don't think there's any doubt about it.
I, I'm always, I marvel at it too. I marvel that we've been 20 years, but Dave, I know you, 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 you have your hands a lot of times. You'll see midget racing, micro racing, all of this stuff up in Indiana. There are so many neat programs for young kids, including young girls mm -hmm. that are coming. I, I, I think it's a matter of sooner rather than later with all of the youth programs we have as well. Yeah. I'm just glad Steve that young people want to race. Yes. I mean, yeah. That's going to be the, the driving force that keeps the sport alive, and I'm grateful. And I'm grateful, Aaron, for you. I mean, I think that for, for anything, if somebody has done it once, you've at least opened that door. And so for a young woman, if they consider, I want to be a professional sprint racer, I want to beat the world of outlaws, well, Aaron won a race. The, you can't overstate how much less daunting something is if somebody's done it once, and you did it. Bravo! <laughs> Thank you. You're right. And now that I have a, a nine-year-old daughter who she prefer, prefers one horsepower as opposed to a lot of horsepower, she's a big horse rider, but it's that same principle. I want her to know that she can accomplish anything that she sets her mind to. Now, Dave, I want to hear about this new book you're working yeah. on, because as you probably all, everyone knows that Steve Kinzer is my all-time hero. Um, love that I had the chance to race with him. Love that I had the chance to beat him that one time. <laughs> into Larry. Um, but what is it like working with Steve? I just always admire, I mean, what a talent, what a wonderful person, family. Uh, what has it been like writing a book with him? Well, it's been great. You know, Aaron, Steve and I, uh, I'm dating myself. We've been friends for more than 40 <laughs> years since he started and I started about the same time. And He's just a good friend and to go down to his house and sit at his kitchen table and have him tell me stories so of sprint cool. car racing. It's been pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm, I, I know I'm a homer here, but people are really going to like this book. Um, yeah. Steve, you're going to be surprised. Um, he's just been great. He's so willing to share the ups and downs of his life and his, his career. It's, it's just been great. And it's been a privilege for me to be a part of it. Yeah, sign me up for the pre-order. Yeah. Well, what's 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 the timeline on this, Dave? Where are you at in the process? Uh, we're pretty far along, and uh, we've said for quite a while, we revealed the cover at Knoxville, and that went real well. And uh, sometime after the first of the year, we, we'll have the book finished by then, and then it's up to we're kind of at the mercy of the printer and when they can actually get us on the press and get us books. So sometime, I'd say in the February time frame, we're still shooting for that. Perfect awesome. to start the sprint car season. That's yeah. for sure. Good time of the year. Hey, listen, we we got to sell some books, so you got to have me and Steve on here. We got to hype this thing. Yeah. We'll have to do that. That's time. Be, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome. That sounds good. Dave, we just, uh, we, we love your perspective on this. We appreciate your spect uh, perspective on this. We're grateful that you spent some time with us here talking about this uh, historic day in sprint car racing and historic day for Aaron, our co-host here on Wing Nation. Thanks for the time, and uh, we wish you well. We can't wait to see the Steve Kinzer book. That's going yeah, to be thank awesome. you guys. And once again, congratulations, Aaron. I mean, you thank earned you. this and it's uh, it's nice. I'm privileged to be a part of your day. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Dave Argerbright joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Hey Aaron, 20 years since you won your outlaw race. Very proud of you. Uh, we're out here in Tulare. You should be out here with us. See you later. The dude. The dude. Danny Lasoski joining us here on Wing Nation. It was fun getting to catch up with some of those guys out there. Aaron, as uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of, I'm, I'm going to kind of go with the same question. I think I went with Dave and what I went with uh, Paul. Um, this anniversary came up, and I think. Am I right that Brian Dunlap, maybe from Dirt Vision or someone like that, reached out to you? What was what was your thought when you're like, wow, 20 years? And what has it been like as you put your arms around this? Well, to be honest, I was really aware that the October 29th was are. coming up because it's a pretty significant day in my life you, that yes. I still remember every single year. You know, and of course, uh, back 20 years ago, I won uh, my, my trophy was this little plaque that has since fallen off the wall in our office a few times and is yeah. pieced together with super glue. You know, now I see these giant trophies they get and I'm like, huh, maybe, maybe I'll make one up. 
Um, but no, it, it just means a lot. It means a lot to hear from people like Paul McMahon, who said, you know, I never looked at you as just a female racer and to hear Dave Argerbright say those things. And um, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's probably my, obviously my, my biggest accomplishment in a race car. Personally, I love sprint cars. I love sprint car racing. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a, I don't really, I'm, I'm not a bragger. I, oh, I was not. telling oh. someone earlier, you know, I'm the youngest of five. I have two older brothers and two older sisters who always kept my ego in check. Yeah. So talking about my own accomplishments is awkward for me, but um, I am very proud of it. You know, it, it was a lot of work and yeah, we won one race that year, but we lost about 85. So <laughs> yeah. it was um, humbling and it was tough. We lived in the truck and trailer and stayed at super eight motels and cheap hotels and cr traveled the country. Um, but it's wonderful memories. You know, it was a time in my life that I didn't have any other responsibilities. I think I had a, a cell phone bill. I didn't even own a car at the time. I just lived on the road. Um, but to be the only woman to do it and to hopefully open up those doors for other women or to show even my own daughter that you can accomplish anything you want. Like those are, those are the things that, that mean a lot to me. Really, truly does. That is for sure. Um, just, just, uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, 20th anniversary of this. It just, you uh, feel old though. Yeah, I know. It's just, it, and that's what, well, and, and as I was talking to the guys getting those video snippets out there, they're like, 20 years oh, yeah. oh my gosh you know i mean tk talked about gray, gray hairs and everything yeah really truly is it's it it, it is a, a a tremendous accomplishment and um just uh just 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 as a as a as a girl dad as well yeah. uh that's what i share with my girls is like that you can do it and i thought it was really really cool um dave and paul talking about that too is as uh, just guys and yeah and, and honestly when i think about just doing wing nation for the last 10 or so years however long we've been doing know. this together uh the amount of guys that still come on and speak to me with such respect like you know it, it still warms my heart when someone Lan like lance deweese is like well you know aaron and i'm like yes, i don't know. know anything like you know but i i kind of have a small recollection so it's just it's been really neat to do this show you know as to carry on in the sprint car world and stay connected really fun stuff that is for sure to larry 20 years ago tonight, it was the world of outlets. Oh, I, I had something in my mind, okay? Um, the irony of this is, is that 20 years ago, this was not counted as a win. Yes. Now, it's a preliminary so, night. It was a preliminary years. night, and for years, what was it, about six or eight years ago, I think Kevin Eckert, Johnny Gibson, and a whole bunch of them documented this. And so yeah. technically you got the win like six or eight years ago. They Which started... kind of, yeah. And it was always like, uh, why was it called a preliminary night when you're racing the exact same guys? Yeah, you it wasn't the, the same amount of money that you want on Saturday night, but it was. So it did irk me that it was always like not technically a World of Outlaws win. So when they changed that, that was a call. I think it was Brian Dunlop who called me and, you know, told me. And that, that day was really significant as well because then it wasn't just me saying I won a World of Outlaw race. Now it was actually on the record books showing that I did. Really neat stuff. Really, truly is. So uh, we just heard from Danny Lasoski, Sprint Car Hall of Famer. We always talk about the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Really quiet week as far as the birthdays go. Later this week, Wilbur Shaw, Tom Bigelow would have been the birthdays coming up. But um, they've got that Triple X chassis, uh, Al Parker racing engine raffle. And uh, Aaron, you know, I mean, I know you and Craig will turn my mic off and everything like that. We're getting close to that most wonderful time of the year. Um, sprintcarstuff.com sprintcarstuff.com wouldn't be a bad place to no, go I'm you, you waited all the way to the end of October this year to mention it so well, I'm actually yeah, really proud of you I started mentioning it like, in July yeah, exactly. no like May like May okay <laughs> um, sprint car stuff for the holiday gift yes. giving for the sprint car fan in your area sprintcarstuff.com um, getting down there on the racing a little I bit uh, I know it's getting to that point getting to that time of year um, watch the weather on this one. Uh, I follow along with uh, Tim and Laura Crawley mm -hmm. at Texarkana 67 Speedway. Um, I, I just, uh, they're not going to make a decision until Wednesday on it. Um, I, I absolutely hate that we're not making a decision till Wednesday. That means there's a question. Yeah. Uh, what I want for Tim and Laura Crawley and, and I've talked to a bunch of people about what they're doing at Texarkana 67 Speedway. There is everybody in the sprint car world wants blue sky, sunshine, and 70 degrees for Tim and Laura Crawley yeah. because what they're doing at this racetrack is insane. Uh, I think it was Terry Gray told me, I can tell you Tim Crawley is this, Tim Crawley is that, Tim Crawley is that, and there's not a promoter in the country that is going to work any harder yeah. than Tim Crawley is 
to make that place. They've got some walls going up around there. There's not a day goes by on Facebook where he's not yeah, working on yeah. something at that racetrack. And they have been rewarded with crap weather. Um, and here we are on Monday he posted, we're just going to watch the weather and we'll make a decision on Wednesday. Uh, let's hope everything let's hope blows out of there. Around, yeah. And so folks, um, it's the short track nationals. And remember, this was the one that was done at little rock forever and ever the three sixty race. They've gone four tens with it. The ASCS elite outlaws four tens prelim night, Friday night finale on uh Saturday night, $20,000 to win. Uh, a, let's hope the weather is not a factor. And B, if you are somewhere where you can go to Texarkana, yeah. go to that racetrack. If nothing else, buy a ticket. And, and you don't even have to stick around for the race. Buy a ticket to support Tim and Laura Crawley, yeah. what they've done. They have put their heart and soul and worked their guts out on this racetrack. And we need them to get better weather. Uh, it's just what it is. Uh, King of the West Series, Saturday, they wrap up their season. The tribute to Gary Patterson. It is uh, Stockton Dirt Track. Three points between yeah. Dustin Sanders and Cole Championship Matino. battle still. Yes, really cool. Aaron, they're racing in Joycey. Of course they are. The Dirty Jersey finale. Friday is the non-winner's race. Saturday, yeah. 10000 to win. Yeah, they do this deal, and Doug Rose started I this I kind of like it. If you've never won a 410 sprint car race, there's a race for you on Friday night. I like when there's different things Twisted like, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, we have the twist on that, and then Saturday night, just all the big boys come yep. into town and run for ten grand. When Danny like Dietrich, it. co-promoter of this one. Oh boy! Yeah, Danny's had uh, it's been fun. I I think yeah. you know Danny is Danny is one of our characters in the sport. Um, but huge respect for Danny, yep. his passion for the sport, and and wanting to roll up his sleeves and promote a big race. So it's the Dirty Jersey finale at Bridgeport Friday and Saturday night. We've talked about this in the last few weeks, and this will be the final week we get a chance to talk to it. But you all need to go see this. It is the Cowboy Classic, and um, it is uh, in memory of Sean Vardell. Sean, uh, just one of the great characters in sprint car racing here in the Carolinas. He was the owner of the Carolina Sprint Tour, uh, lost his life in May, I think it was, on a motorcycle accident. And um, his buddies, uh, George Lux, has taken over the uh, Carolina Sprint Tour they're doing this at Beckley Motor Speedway Saturday night, 4,000 to win. They're doing this in Beckley with the hopes that some drivers from Pennsylvania will come over, some drivers from Indiana yeah. will come down, from Carolina. Um, go, uh, and if you're up there in the Beckley Motor, Beckley of West Virginia area, go support this race. This is the Cowboy Classic for 305 Race Saver Sprint Cars. And uh, I'm anxious to see how they go. Um, I've, I've had a few people say that they're going to have a few race cars up there. That's and great. That is good. This started, let me tell you how this started, okay? Beckley Motor Speedway, okay? They they booked a race there, and this is this is out of the realm, out of the area, just to tell you how good these Carolina Sprint Tour guys are, okay? I, I'm literally somewhere, somewhere in the country, and I see this video of a promoter standing in his pit area. Promoter standing in his pit area. Pit area is immaculate. And he said... I walked into my pits this morning and I've never had this happen before. He said, this is the Carolina sprint tour pits. And all of the garbage was in cans oh, or wow. right piled up by cans. And he literally shot a video of this pit area where this series left this pit area, probably finer than when they arrived there. Wow. And that started all the conversations. And then obviously we lost Sean and that started yeah. all of this. And it started because a couple of guys took the crap that they normally leave in the pits, put it in a garbage can. Like you're supposed to. Like you're supposed to. <laughs> the promoter noticed it, said, man, I want this Carolina Sprint Tour back. That's These great. are guys that respect my space, my property. Yeah. And it has evolved into this Cowboy Classic this weekend. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's really I, just, neat I think that's really awesome. So go to a sprint car race if you're around this weekend. So. Aaron, happy anniversary. Fun stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really? Thank you, guys. Thank you and Craig for putting this together. I appreciate it. Very really much. fun, fun show. Really, truly is. We thank Paul McMahon for joining us. We thank also for joining us Dave Argerbright. But more important than all of that, thank you all for tuning in and watching and listening to Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.